Force. So, uh, 2.4 has been down for a little while. Um, I've been working to make sure that the improvements that are meant to have come with 2.4 have worked as intended. Um, sad to report, not all of them have, and I've put details up in the forums, but this video is about the menu system. So, 2.4 came with a, the Game Master GUI, and I've been implementing that into the game, uh, the GM theater, essentially. So, starting the game there, uh, <laughs> and the clock flying at our face. Uh, if you haven't watched the clock episode, give it a watch, it's uh, interesting. This uh, method I've found of timekeeping gives us a little bit more uh, flexibility um, in the mission scripting. Anyway, you don't need the observer screen anymore, you just use the game master screen, and I've got control of a ship, obviously, to spawn it in. So, master, there we go. Uh, here we are in the Dionysus system. So, uh, we have got up in the top left hand corner instructions, toggle menu, and we've got send comms. Um, so the instructions button always like brings you to this instructions page and I've made sure that um, given the different states of the menu uh, it's going to ask you for different kinds of input and if you're ever confused as to what kind of input it's asking for uh, or the structure of that input press the instructions button because nine times out of ten it'll have something there that you can use uh, to help you get on. Um, the menu itself refreshes every one minute without input so if you don't push a button or if you don't uh, use any of the the menu options within a minute it'll just refresh back to the, the route and that is to ensure that if someone reconnects um, and you were in the menus uh, so if someone disconnects and then reconnects and you were in the menus uh, that the the menu is usable by that person um, there is also some redundancy in that uh, here it says in the event of a disconnect press Z to bring up the menus that's just because Z is the back button and that refreshes the menus manually that being said though sometimes key presses don't work uh, it's just a little bug I've also detailed here um, a ship needs to be in simulation and have moved I've noticed that if a ship doesn't move uh, in the simulation just even a little bit like that it seems not to properly initialize and so the input from the the game master of that ship uh, doesn't seem to work for some reason. I could be wrong in my assessment, but that appears to be what it is. Um, anyway, we have a toggle menu button. So, this is refreshing every 10 seconds, by the way. When you're on the root of the menu, all of these things refresh every 10 seconds. Um, and it's not flickering because it uses the clock to refresh rather than timers. Um, and so, yeah, no flickering, still persistent um, enough to make sure that when people come back in, uh, it works with a person who joins late. And so, you can toggle this menu by pushing it on and off, which is kind of nice. Uh, you can do that in any state as well, so if I go into a menu, uh, just in here, I'm a few layers into the menu, I go set location, wormhole 1 say, and I get this, this number pad here that obscures everything on my screen on the left hand side. So sometimes I'm going to want to read that, so if I really need to, I can just toggle it off, and I can read that and then put it back on. And it's in the same place as well, it doesn't refresh the menu. So um, you can toggle the menu at any point in any actual menu structure and it will bring it back where you expected it to be. Uh, and then we've got the Z key here, this uh, little button. You can either push the Z key on your keyboard um, to go back or you can push the button manually with your mouse. Um, all the menus I've been through before, uh, there are a few changes which I'll try and go through but the main thing really is uh, just taking a look at the the different inputs. So when you go into a menu, first of all, everything in the brackets, these keys represent the keys you can push to trigger the menu. So we can we can use keyboard or mouse uh, to do all of the uh, functions within this menu system. So I go into ship control menu there and we can see we've got title, we've got all the options and all the numbers that correspond to those options. So you can push or you can uh, so you can click or you can push a button, uh, which is nice. Backing up, um, going into a menu with multiple pages, damage and repair. Here you go, you see the uh, title menu. Uh, sorry, the title of the menu has got something behind it, so you can push it. Uh, you can just push the title and it will toggle to the next page. Uh, or you can push the key that, uh, that corresponds to the menu itself, so D for damage and repair. If I push D, it will toggle that as well. So you can just toggle in the same way you used to on the 2.3 version of the menu. Um, and sometimes you'll get extended input requests. Uh, so for instance, uh, let's say we're spawning a ship. So we've got neutral ships just now. 
Uh, this is another multi-layered menu with pages that so you can just click and toggle. But on the first page, you've got manual ship spawn, manual fleet spawn. Now, I've made sure that these are nice and user-friendly, not asking you for a giant code anymore. Uh, instructions, just at this point, are still the basic instructions, but as soon as you go into uh, spawn ship, it's asking you for the ship race. And if you don't know what the ship races are, that's okay. Just push instructions. And then we have factions. Then maybe I should say set ship faction, but um, right now, it just gives you a list of factions. So if you're setting the faction, it's from 0 to 11. If you're setting the side, it's from 1 to 11. And there's a difference between the two, and I'll explain that in just a second. Uh, but here's the list of the uh, current factions and races. So I'm going to set, um, I'm going to make a, a Zimni ship. Here we go. 11, confirm. Now you can either push space, which is what that represents, or you can press, uh, press the button with your mouse. So I'm going to push space. Uh, ship side. So I want it to be uh, friendly. So I want it to be on the USN side, which is 2. Confirm. Now ship class, not going to know the ship class is off by heart straight away obviously, so in the instructions there's a list of them here. You can push 0 for random, um, which is what I'm going to do actually, 0 for random. And then ship hull, if you want to make it a very specific hull, I'm going to make it a Zimni battleship hull. So it's not going to be called the Zimni battleship more than likely, and I think I might have pushed the wrong button there, so I'm going to push the clear button here to reset the input, 6-2, and then confirm, and you can see it says creating ship, and here we have a Zimni Scout. It decided the class was Scout, and I chose a battleship. <laughs> so that's my problem, it's my fault. Um, if you want to, you can just push zero for every single one of them, and it will randomize, uh, apart from actually the race, because zero for the race is civilian. Um, so you can see you've got a Terzl uh, Terzlin Corp, a uh, Terzlin Corp rather, which is a civilian faction, and it's randomized its uh, side to the uh, side number seven, I think it is, which is pink. And it's a luxury ship, which is its class, and it's randomized its hull. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of flexibility there. It's fairly, um, you know, a lot more easy to use than it previously was, where it was just one big long six digit or eight digit code. Um, that you had to remember or learn. Fleet spawn, same sort of thing, except to ask for different stuff. So faction, I'm going to set it to three for Corellian. There you go, and then three again for Corellian, and then type. Um, we got one for non-combat, two for escorted, which is a mix between uh, non-combat and combat ships, and then three for combat. So I'm going to put combat ships down, and then number of ships. Recommended max of 20 because it takes a little while sometimes to bring them in um, or you can randomize and the randomize is between zero uh, Sorry between one or two and twelve. So I'm going to set uh, 15 There we go, and I'll start spawning away uh, a Corellian fleet uh, I believe I've did I put it as just combat. Yeah, every single one of these will be a combat fleet of some kind or combat ship of some kind so Ship spawn, fleet spawn, nice and easy to use with, uh, with instructions there. And obviously, if you want to use the menus, you can just straight up spawn uh, a USN science vessel by being on the USN page and pushing 3. Or you can go to the hostels menu. There we go, we've got hostels menu for a Corellian, Scarron, Torgoth, Avonian, mixed, Raider. And uh, if you go and just, you know, Scarron, for instance, opens up a menu. Not all of these are fleshed out as much as I. Uh, I would like, but Corellian there, if you just push Corellian, it'll build a Corellian ship for you. Corellian Cruiser, got another Corellian coming in, Corellian Scout, Dread, <laughs> that's kind of the wrong way around, but who cares. Um, and there you go, another military patrol. All right, so uh, nice and, you know, nice and flexible. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of scope for you to just build whatever you want. And obviously with the procedural ships, uh, giving you a bit more uh, freedom to build whatever you want. Um, you can really do a lot of stuff on the fly. Right now, nobody's dying, by the way, because difficulty is set to zero. Uh, so let's set uh, the difficulty to whatever difficulty you would actually like in this sim. Um, so game settings is G. Push that. And uh, we end up with uh, a, a menu with a bunch of stuff in it. We, I've added some markers uh, for, like... Uh, storytelling stuff like a radio signal. Let's say we, we have a radio signal that pops up in, in the asteroid field there. Um, or an energy signature deep within the nebula. Like that. You could have this ship over here. By pushing J, by the way. Um, and you could have life signs over here as well. 
uh, which all in slightly different colours. Just something for the you know for the the science officer to go. Oh, there's a life sign over there, rather than you telling them. Um, and then we could have this guy uh, pushing the S key for the ship menu. I could set one of his elite systems. I could set him to cloak, and so he would be the uh, he would be the life sign and energy signature. And then you could make him decloak as they approached him just by pushing that. Cool. So yeah, there's a ni nice amount of flexibility here. I was about to set the uh, um, the difficulty here, and I got sidetracked with the menus. Uh, so set difficulty. Let's set it to seven. There we go. It's difficulty set. People should start dying now. <laughs> here we have uh, a couple of guys having a fight. Yeah, we got some shields going down now. Good. All right, people are hurting. Um, I've been through all the control, a lot of the controls on the menu system before. Um, most of the time, when you're ask, being asked for extended input, there's going to be like a, an overlay on uh, on the number pad. So if I want to, for instance, go into ship control, and there's an option here for setting appearance. Um, I mentioned I was going to change, I was going to tell you the difference between side and race. Setting the side is to change the color and essentially the effective fighting side of, uh, of the ship. So if I go set side and set it to Scarron. You see his colour changes, but he's still a Torgoth Goliath. Um, and obviously he'll start attacking people who are not on his side, if he has that in his AI. So, um, I'm going to set him back to the USN side, which is where he was. And if I want to actually make him a Scarron, then I will go set, uh, I'll go to Set Race instead. Set Race, and now Scarron, and then you can see he's a Scarron Goliath. So this is the race in faction over here, uh, whereas the, the set side is just his colour and who he will attack essentially, or who he won't attack. Um, so yeah, just be aware that they are just, they're different and uh, to set, you know, to have flexibility between setting both of them in different places, different uh, in different ways, is powerful, uh, much more powerful than having them both set at the same time. If you want to make a, a specific name for a ship, uh, a designation, shall I say, not not a name. Um, because there is no there's no storage in this uh, mission script. There's no ability to store variables uh, that are strings or anything like that. It's just numbers, uh, which is very very limiting. But I've done my best with the set name. Um, when you push set name, you can see we've got the number pad. We've got a little overlay here. Um, the name structure and the instructions here is letter number number, and so this gives us the ability for 500 separate names uh, from A to E and from 00, zero to 99. Nine on each one of those letters. So if I want to set this guy's name to B89, there we go, B89. And if I want to set his name to E67, there it is. And if I wanted to give him a random name, I can push zero, and confirm, and then he gets a random name. Um, and for those of you who you know want to have specific designations, say you've got a point of interest, uh, a ship of interest that is in your scenario, but you can't guarantee that it's going to be called a specific thing. If you want to give your players like uh, the hint to go at your section for like a ship that's, that's been smuggling or something, designation B55, then here it is. This is the smuggling ship B55. That's him right there. Um, so yeah, just to help keep things uh, a bit more immersive, I guess. Um, there are other overlays that appear on the number pads for things like race and sector. Um, if I go into one of the systems for uh, configuring gates, for instance, set location uh, for gate one. Here we go. So we have an overlay for the systems. <laughs> Some of them have been clipped off, but Dionysus, we've got Yulia, Jirkara, Havarez, and Tarantis. A couple of these are uh, sectors that I was building. In fact, one of them is uh, a a sector I was, sorry, a system I was building uh, as a demonstration on how to build systems in this um, sandbox, which is apparently something that's somewhat of a hot topic. So um, I'll be releasing that shortly. But yeah, uh, you can obviously put whatever you want in these, and these overlays will just help guide you. And if you're still not sure after looking at that, we've got the information uh, in the instructions. So. Um, yeah, overlays, uh, we've got prompts, sorry, we've got overlays, we've got feedback uh, for when things are toggled on and off, toggling gateways, gates are active, toggling gateways, gates active, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, there's very little uh, potential for you just to get lost in the menu system, uh, which is exactly what I was trying to go for. Um, there we go, we've still got the 
tractor beam that turns itself on and off. Which is kind of nice. Someone has died and left a wreck. Would you look at that? I could go, I could go tractor beam that wreck. Anyway, I think I've talked enough uh, about the menu system, but hopefully you get how flexible it is and you know how usable it is. Uh, like I said, I will release that video on uh, defining space, like play spaces within the, the system system that I've got. And uh, hopefully that will guide a lot of you uh, while you're trying to build your, your own custom play spaces. Anyway. Uh, have fun, and I guess I'll see you another time, or as always, not actually see you, I will not even hear you. I will just sense your judgement. Anyway, bye-bye. <laughs>